What's up, Athena fam? Welcome back to our comprehensive guide to creating a precision irrigation strategy. My name is Jay O'Keel, Facility Advisor for Athena. This is video four of our five video series, and today we'll be covering irrigation phases P2 and P3. We will go over when to add P2 shots and how to use them to control our substrate EC and dry back. Let's take a moment to review P2 and P3 irrigation phases and why they're important. The P2 phase is also known as the maintenance phase because we use P2 shots to maintain our VWC percent target within the substrate throughout the light time period. The P3 phase occurs after our last irrigation event of the day. This is the point in which our substrate is given time to dry out until we irrigate again the following day. Being able to utilize our P2 and P3 irrigation phases to find the right balance between VWC percent, runoff volume, and dry back is the most important concept to understand to dial in your irrigation rate. Now let's talk about when to add P2 irrigation events. This is crucial to make sure our plants do not dry out too much and that our substrate EC does not become out of range. Early in the growth cycle, our plants are smaller and transporting less rapidly. At this stage, we are only using the P1 irrigation phase to maintain the amount of moisture in the substrate without exceeding 20% dry back in our P3. Once our P3 dry back exceeds 20%, it is now necessary to add P2 irrigation events so that our plants don't dry out too much. We will begin by adding a single P2 shot one to two hours after the end of the P1 phase to bring our VWC percent back to our target. If your dry back still exceeds 20% at the end of the day, We'll continue to add additional P2 shots spaced equally apart until our dry back is within the correct range. As we learned in video two on crop steering, manipulating dry back and substrate AC will allow us to promote either vegetative or generative growth. By timing our P2 shots correctly, we can effectively control our substrate AC and dry back. To control our substrate AC, we need to increase or decrease the amount of runoff in our P2 phase. P2 shots above the point of field capacity will flush the media of built up nutrients, which will decrease substrate EC and promote vegetative growth. To promote vegetative growth, our goal is to achieve 8 to 16% of the substrate volume and runoff per day. To promote generative growth, our P2 shots will result in little to no runoff, which will increase our substrate EC. This is called EC stack. During generative steering, we are looking for 1 to 7% of the substrate volume and runoff per day. To control the amount of dry back, we can add or subtract P2 shots to the end of the P2 phase. To decrease our dry back, we will add irrigation events to the end of the P2 phase. This will decrease the amount of time our substrate has to dry out, which will alleviate stress and promote more vegetative growth use. For vegetative growth, we will be looking for 30 to 40% dry back. To increase our dry back, we will subtract irrigation events from the end of the P2 phase. This will increase the amount of time our substrate has to dry out, which will increase stress and promote generative growth cues. For generative growth, we are looking for a 40 to 50% dry back. As I mentioned in the last video, our dry back targets are calculated based on a relative change rather than an absolute change. Calculating dry backs using a relative change is more accurate because BWC percent at field capacity can vary in different substrates. Thanks for tuning in to our precision irrigation series. I hope you're ready for the next video where we'll cover our runoff procedure and sensor placement guide. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave any questions you have down in the comment section.